is a Vladislava Kukta looking to become the fourth successive Kazakh gold medalist on the night. Uh, guess what? She's a South Pole. The only turned 21 uh, just a couple of weeks ago as well. No surprise, she's a national champion. And up against her from Uzbekistan, we've got another Kazakh Uzbek matchup here. Is Sitora Turdebekova, who likewise only 10 days ago turned 20. They share birthdays, the pair of them, separated only by a couple of weeks and only separated by a couple of years as well. So I think the, the latest young talents off the production lines so from both their respective. Uh, countries with such uh, prestige and pedigree in these events and I'm really looking forward to this one I saw Tour de Bacova in the World Youth Championships recently she got a bronze medal, she lost in the semi-finals to Poonam of India, one of the seven Indian fighters who went on to win gold and, and Poonam a difficult fighter to deal with along the same lines as, as Jolomon who we've just seen, a physical fighter, a come forward fighter who sets a very a very hot kind of relentless pace and Tudor Bakova just struggled to get to grips with that within that three round format exactly the kind of formula we were just referring to there so I think this is going to be an interesting an interesting kind of fight certainly Cook does have the the easier passage through she's had relatively comfortable score lines in her two victories uh, so far and it was a, a, a clean sweep on the cards for Tuda Bikova in the semi-finals as well. Intriguing matchup this one. Kukta in the red, Tuda Bikova in the blue. And a sharp one-two there from Tuda Bikova and quickly out of range almost immediately too. You always think with that uh, relatively good recent experience for Terdebikova, it's not that long ago that youth championships, uh, Andy, you know you were out there. It's those competitions where there's, there's bouts in a, a relatively short space of time, you're, you're on weight from day to day as well. It can take a lot out of fighters. Sometimes being busy, though, can be a real bonus, can be a, a real asset when you come to the next competition. Absolutely. Throughout, throughout the course of that two weeks in Kelta in Poland, you could you could see fighters really grow into the into the tournament. You'd see them backstage sometimes. They'd come to watch teammates. They weren't boxing themselves. They're just having a bit of a workout. Maybe got the sweatsuit on, just as you say, keeping that weight under control. And it's just invaluable experience, really. They're all such young athletes when you go to those those World Juniors or or World Youths. But the interesting thing about this, as you said, that there's not that much age separates these two so in terms of experience there isn't all that much between them really like the way that Kukta has gone about this now she's starting to get a rhythm that, that southpaw jab is really starting to work well and she's sort of jab back out half a step out of range then back with the counter is really starting to warm up Kukta who's also managed to bag herself a, a junior world bronze six years ago as well so she shares the same kind of medal as uh, Tour de Bikova has managed to garner recently. That's a nice one-two there from Tour de Bikova as well. So this is uh, this is an interesting match, I think, through the first couple of minutes. She just kind of looks like the boss in there, Kukta, as well, doesn't she? On, on the front foot, manoeuvring Tour de Bikova around the ring getting her into the kind of positions that that she wants her to be and that's uh, that's what it looks like doesn't it yeah it does look exactly like that Andy. it's quite clever pressure it's it's you know you compare it to the previous fight with with Zolomon who you know has changed her play in the second round but it was very much a harried hassling pressure this is quite a, an intelligent patient pressure from Kukta There gets through the, the left hand once again. So it's been a good start from her. I just wonder, you know, the, the, the pressure's not always physical as well. It, 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 it's when you're under that kind of momentum, that kind of calculating pressure, it, I think it starts to impose a, 
a mental toll as well. And certainly, Tura Bakova was asked a few questions there in the first round. She needs to try and disrupt that rhythm, doesn't she? She did that in the final 20, 30 seconds there. Just managed to get her feet in nice and quickly through a crisp combination, got through with a couple, and then either grab hold or just look to get back out again. That's a lovely bit of work there. Just, just throws the jab, pulls back, avoids the right hand, throws another jab. It's, it's not real heavy punching she's looking to do here, the Kazakh. Just, just trying to hit the, hit the target. That's still the major difference between between top level amateur boxing and, and professional fighting. You, you, you can win the fight by hitting the target in Aiba boxing. You don't necessarily have to hurt your opponent to win it. Pro boxing is different. That is, as people often describe it, the, the hurt business. But increasingly in, in, in recent years, of course, you do see fighters looking to punch through that target more, don't you? Short, shot one, two there from Kukta at the start of the round, but it, it was a retaliation, really sharp punch. And sometimes when they're we're up close like that, it's it's not always easy to see exactly who's landing and, and where. And I, Tour de Bikova, enjoyed some success in those opening sequences. Oh, nice right hand as well, once again from Tour de Bikova. And I just wondered the, the kind of pressure that uh, the very subtle, intelligent pressure that the Kukta was applying in that first round, I just wondered at the end of it, it did look like maybe Tura Bikova was just becoming a little frayed around the edges physically. And I wondered if we were going to see a, a conti continuation of that into the second round. Actually, Tura Bikova's managed to, to gather herself and, and get back on her boxing. It's almost like watching two fighters fight at different speeds in this kind of fight, though, isn't it? Because Kukta, as you said, is, is nice and balanced, is nice and measured. That front foot always just, just taking that space. Turda Bakova's been made to work hard here. She's got that kind of air of a fighter who's, who's having to work hard to keep Kukta off her. But in the three-round fight, you can win the fight in that kind of, in that kind of mode. I'll tell you what, with it, the shape of Kukta, a couple of nice shots landed there from, from both boxers. But I, I bet you Kukta, in terms of her shape and style, I bet you she's the, the kind of boxer that the coach will occasionally haul over to show another young would-be star of the future. Right, look at this guard, look at, look at this technique. This is exactly how you go about it. Her, her shape and technique is excellent. Just been a bit more scrappy, I think, uh, in this round. Not as clear cut the moments for either boxer. But her left hand, Kukta, is absolutely perfectly delivered. And when she does measure it, it is uh, usually with little drawback, little tell, and little movement back out of the space as, as well. Technically, very sound. Suppose the big question here is, is Andy, if you were in the corner of, and this is a tight round, so I wouldn't like to, uh, like to say how this has gone e either way. And there you go, a couple of uh, shots left and a right at the end of it, eye-catching ones for Tour de Bikova. As they touch gloves at the end of it, a real mark of respect, as you'd expect in this great sport. That little salvo at the end for Tour de Bikova, G give her a, a shout on the cards. So that was a that was a tough tough round to score. That could have been enough. That, that combination at the end there from Tura Bakova could have been enough just to see her nick this. As I said, kind of midway through the round, when you look at what's happening in there, what you see is Kukta manoeuvring her opponent around, making the running. She's the one taking the center of the ring. She's the one who looks to be capable of providing a threat, a latent threat almost at all times. But Tura Bakova, Although she does look slightly more desperate, it's not quite the right word, but you know what I'm getting at. She looks slightly more on the back foot and looking for ideas. She did land some decent punches in that second round, so maybe the red corner are going to 
are going to tell Kukta or will have told her between rounds, look, you need to get out there and let your hands go more and make sure you win this round. You fancy this is uh, crucial, this third round, and into it we go. I think exactly that. Todorovikov has been perhaps reactive uh, throughout, and, and, and maybe that's the best way to, to describe it. And also we're talking, Andy, about you know the, how you score a fight, um, the things you're looking for, ring generalship and the flow of play, the, the, the pattern of the fight. That is often something that has to come into it as well. And you'd have to say that although Turdebikova comes back with a couple of shots of her own there, you'd have to say on balance that the pattern of the fight is being dictated by Kupka throughout. You would, you would. The five judges at, at ringside will be looking first and foremost though for scoring punches. Punches landed with a knuckle part of the glove to the torso, to the head. Turdebikova gets in close there, lets her hands go. And two, a couple there, I think, maybe three, did did get through. That's why I think she just needs to just do a little bit more in this final round, Kushta. Maybe let her hands go a little bit more. She dips ahead and walks straight onto the right hand there, though, and with just over, what, heading up towards the midway point of, of this third and final round. Again, there's, there's not a great deal in this one. If anything, I think the fighter in blue is probably nicking this one so far although there's a long way to go yeah i think she's done well end of the the second round start of this third through the first minute and a half is Tertubikova who seems to be landing those shots particularly when they both miss and come in close it does look as though Tertubikova is getting the right hand off particularly and has landed a few of those shots and despite the fact that she she has been dictating the play cooked out she's not quite been able to do it as successfully or noticeably as she did perhaps through the, the first round particularly just snapped off a one two there Kushta held her feet a little bit and a, and a right hand came back in from to the Bakova the referee just having a word with the fighter in red there about the heads coming together footwork's been better from to Bakova in this third round hasn't it she just managed to to judge the distance, get a bit more rhythm in her own work, which is, I think, the word that Andy was using for, for Cook in the, in the first round. I think it's been a good uh, response, this, from Turibikova. After that first round, it looked like she really had to do something. Second was close, not easy to judge. She had those eye-catching shots right at the end of it, just before the bell. And she landed quite a few shots particularly the short right hand at the start through the first minute of this third round as well so there goes the final bell Turdebikova thanks to her rally particularly through the second half of the second round and through this third is, uh, is giving herself a shout absolutely they're pretty happy in that Uzbek corner as well and she went back into it there because I think they feel that she did did the stronger work in that third and final round and I would probably agree with them. You talked about distance there, and that, that's always key, isn't it, in, in all fights. You could argue that boxing is all about distance, really. And there was a right hand there, just as you were talking about it. She came in from, from out of range, landed a right hand, grabbed hold. And just an example of the kind of adjustments that possibly she managed to make quite effectively heading through that fight. So this is, this is right in the balance, this one, I would say. Gentlemen. The winner by anonymous decision in the blue corner represents. She's done it. Sitora Turdebikova, the third finalist tonight from Uzbekistan. She becomes the first gold medalist for them. And uh, tight on one of the scorecards, pretty comfortable uh, by three points on four of the other scorecards. So there wasn't uh, much of a worry in the end. Uh, I, I really like the way. She found her way, Andy, through the, the second and third rounds particularly. That was a, a terrific response. They say that of any would-be champion or champion, it's, it's finding a way, finding an answer, and she did that tonight. She did. She did. Four of the judges giving it three rounds to, to nil there. I think we were looking at that. There's more of a 2-1 a fight, maybe the Kazakh taking the first round and then Turdebakova coming back and, and taking rounds two and three, although there was very little in, in round two. I think what you might say to to Kuchter, what the coaching team might say to Kuchter off the back of that is that 
in a three round fight, she's probably got to up that punch output. As you said, the feet are great, the technique is good, her balance is good, she holds her boxing together really, really well in, in every facet, but she just didn't really throw enough. Turda Bakova up that in rounds two and three, and that's what won the fight, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's a good point. It, it, what Kukta has is 